In February 2003, the day before huge protests were due to take place right across Britain, Tony Blair was in Scotland to make a speech. He found time to meet an old school friend. Valentine's Day 2003 was probably quite a low point. Um, we went down to have a drink with him. He was holed up in the Caledonian Hotel preparing a speech for a speech he was going to make in Glasgow the next day. You know, Iraq was brewing, um, and he really was pretty down. He wasn't eating well. He was looking really thin. He was looking tired, and it really was. He seemed a very lonely person there, sort of holed up in the room preparing the speech. The next day saw the largest demonstration in British history. But Blair said it didn't matter how many people marched. His position was morally right. And as you watch your TV pictures of the march, just ponder this. If there are 500,000 on that march, that is still less than the number of people whose deaths Saddam has been responsible for. If there are one million, that is still less than the number of people that died in the wars that he started. When initial military success in Iraq gave way to long months of violence, Blair's isolation increased. His domestic plans were also mired in conflict. And the world was soon to be horrified by the spectacle of torture at Abu Ghraib. By 2004, he looked tired, his hair had gone gray. He looked quite arrestingly different from the prime minister who was elected in 1997. It was almost like a sort of a bit of a bit of a long sigh of, oh, you know, are we are we really going to get out? Are we going to get out of this? Are we, is, is what we're doing worthwhile? Can we really turn these things around? The suicide of David Kelly, the weapons inspector, had confronted Blair with two damaging accusations: that he had lied about Iraq's weapons of mass destruction and that the government's decision to name Kelly had led to his death. Have you got that on your hands, Prime Minister? Are you going to resign over this? Without any doubt at all, this got him down. What I was unaware of was how inside him he was not recovering, as well as I thought he was outwardly. Um, he didn't communicate about himself. He, he didn't talk about his innermost feelings. I think people were low and were depressed, and I think he was uh, as well, and especially when some of the atrocities started to come through from uh, Iraq, I think genuinely people felt maybe you can't get through this. I think that maybe it's not possible. Civilian casualties.